against Krug. Krug will bat it away, but that's it. As time expires and the Chicago Blackhawks are Stanley Cup champions in 2013. Great Bruins season and a hard-fought loss in an epic Stanley Cup final. With each season, the Bruins' goal is clear, win the Cup. Anything short of that is a letdown for everyone. Tough way to finish the year, no doubt. But uh, like they always say, I don't remember, don't forget, I should say, the. Uh, uh, opportunity that we had and the opportunity that we earned ourselves. I think uh, we, we don't like to use excuses, but the reality is sometimes you need the breaks, which we got a few years ago. This time we're pretty banged up, I think, and uh, we had a lot of guys that played through, uh, through a lot of adversity here, so you should be proud of yourselves that way. I'm not any happier than you guys right now, but uh, it's my job to come in here and tell you guys that you did a hell of a job this year. <coughs> We had our ups and downs, but we played our best hockey when it counted, and we gave ourselves an opportunity. So don't hang your heads, guys, because they're, uh, like I said, nothing to be ashamed about. Hey, don't hang your heads. This is the backdrop to which the Boston Bruins 2013 offseason was set. A crushing loss in the final minutes of Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final that left the entire organization and their fan base stunned and heartbroken. But as they made their way around the locker room consoling each other, everyone understood that many of the hands they were shaking would not be there at the start of training camp. salary cap NHL roster turnover is inevitable. For the Bruins front office, planning for the 2013-14 season started in early June, while the team was still playing in the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, so um, we're going to go through our roster, cap roster, um, for three years, and you'll see the cap goes down next year to 64.3. So we had some challenges, some hard decisions. When he when he pulls up his thing, we'll, you'll see that we're going to have to lose some players. Sends it across, Drew, tees it up, score! In the unforgiving world of the cap, talented young defensemen like Tori Krug and Matt Bartkowski make veteran players potentially expendable. Guys like Andrew Ferentz. We've talked about him, about his leadership, right? Like, that, that's... That's been very significant. And his battle, and he calms down his partners. Like, he's been really good. It's just like we're kind of at a crossroads here. Like, we, you'll see our, you know, like, we'll, you'll see our roster, you'll see the cap, and I, I just want, I want everyone to think that, that these D are now ready to enter into our lineup, and, you know, we're gonna have spots for them. Well, I mean, it'll be tough to lose his character. Yeah. I mean, I like Andrew, I and mean, I think he's been great for us and everything, and I don't want to. Obviously, you don't want to get rid of them, but you know it is time. I mean, it, it, it's unfortunately. I mean, with the young kids, you can't you can't sacrifice one of those kids to keep an older player. I love Andrew Ferris, but time is. I know you know, that's we it. Can't, we have to move on. Like yeah. it's like he's been a warrior for us, but. But Krug might be the next warrior for us, you know, like he's competitive and he's, you know. We have to get these kids in the line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not because of anything other than that way we're getting the younger. <coughs> yeah. Next on the docket, Tyler Sagan. Drafted second overall by the Bruins in 2010, Sagan has been something of a mystery. Flashes of brilliance followed by dry spells. Sean to Sagan, he scores! 
So now Bruins management is weighing the pros and cons of trading him. So he's another 35-40 goal scorer. Uh, so again, yeah. Well, basically what we're deciding is, is we're keeping our other core guys. We're keeping the, you know, the other guys are our core guys. And, and we need some speed. Yeah, we'll miss his speed. In the regular season, we'll miss his speed. But why, if, if we get guys that we think we can win with, then it, it is what it is. You know, we're, we're winning every year. We're not babysitting. It's knowing your player and their value and, and when to move them. And we were good on Ray Croft, we were good on Phil. Well, it's time. It's time. It's for this guy. Okay, it's something to think about. Let's move on. In late June, just days after their loss in the Stanley Cup Final, the club's brass traveled to New Jersey for the 2013 draft. And the Bruins have a lot on their plate. Big decisions on the future of the team were first and foremost, starting with their top two right wings, Nathan Horton and Tyler Sagan. So, just first from a cap perspective, we have to make some hard decisions um, and one of them was that we weren't signing Andrew Ferentz, who'd been uh, obviously a real competitor for us for seven years. The next one is a little more difficult, and you've probably heard snippets of it. Um, we're trying to sign Horton. Um, we're having difficulty, and we've got a, a list that, that, that we may go to market on if we can't get him done. With, if we sign Horton or a comparable player for that salary, we have to move a player. And the player that I've been shopping is Sagan. I see work hard from Sagan. Without half a second later. And he won't pay the price. I thought he worked hard. I give him credit, and I, I agree with Denny that he's learning. I thought he learned, like, in the playoffs. He's not a physical player. He's, he's, he relies all on his skill. He's a player. Yeah, it does. He's a star player, no doubt. Because he's in our culture. Not knowing Horton's status was hampering the Bruins' efforts to work out their roster. So GM Peter Shirelli decided to get an answer once and for all. Hey, Paul. Not much. Not much. Just uh, looking at the tour de verse. Are you, are you spreading the word that Horty's done? or? Um, where do we stand? No, I know, I know. That's okay. All right, Paul. Thanks, bud. Done. That's all she wrote? Yep. He's done in Boston? Yep. The next day, June 30th, the Bruins Brain Trust reconvened to discuss their situation. They now know Nathan Horton will not be returning. So a final decision must be made on whether to trade Tyler Sagan or not. What I wanted to ask you guys is, uh, um, and I asked you guys a bit yesterday, but um, I, I want to I hear what you think. You may not know the full stuff, but I want to hear what you think about Sagan. Because he's going to be a real good player, and I'd like to hear your opinion again on, on trading him. I just think there's too many red flags. With him. You know, he has a lot of talent, we know that. He should be scoring. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed Like he brings up Kane. Like, if he gives us half of Kane, we win the Stanley Cup. So, you know, I don't like the way the way his game's going. Like, he hasn't proven that he's... He's tough enough, or he plays our style of game. Like, I, I don't know if a leopard ever changes his spots, but he's going to have to. <coughs> We're going to be sitting here next year doing the same thing. Well, 
So obviously there's a couple issues from my perspective. Uh, there's the on ice and off ice. And on the ice, uh, certainly has all kinds of skill, but I don't care what age you are, you're three years into the league, you should have some improvement in the areas that, that I know uh, the coaching staff's talked to them about, and it's, and it's a little slower developing than it should be, and that's because it's it's the areas that, that, that uh, it's difficult to get into in this game. <coughs> For me, if we get, you know, we get the right deal for him, then it's something we need to do. Questions? All right, I'll just man the phones here and we'll see where we go. Within minutes of upper management reaching the tough decision that Tyler Sagan must go, Peter Shirelli wastes no time in trying to work a deal. Well, I, maybe, and that's why I'm calling, like, there's like, if there's a player available, then I would consider moving Tyler. But it would have to be more than like it'd have to be like if you had another. What well, if you had another first? Yeah, I don't think you do. It would have to be your second, uh, possibly cross the or something. But but I'm I'm I would consider it. Yeah. Despite best efforts, there was no deal to be made before or during the draft. But it was coming. And soon. As people across New England were enjoying their 4th of July fireworks, the Boston Bruins pulled the trigger, sending Tyler Sagan and Rich Peverly to Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> In return, they got 28-year-old Swedish winger Louis Erickson. In mid-July, Erickson came to town to pay a visit to his new team. His first order of business, meeting Bruins president Cam Neely. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Welcome aboard. Yeah, thanks. I'm really excited. Uh, I know it's a really good team. It's been one of the best teams the last uh, last couple of years here. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to come here and play and uh, help the team as much as I can. And uh, uh, I heard a lot of good things about this team. So I'm happy to to come here and uh, and play. We, we feel like you know we're still we're still very competitive. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we had a good year last year. Yeah. For Didn't sure. quite. Uh, get what we wanted, but um, you know, we still got, still got a good group of guys, and um, we should have for a long time. We're, you know, our, our aim is to compete every year for the Cubs, so. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's good. That's what you should aim for. Yeah, yeah. that's why you play the game. That's why you play yeah, some up, right? I haven't had that yeah. feeling yet, but yeah. nice to be here. Playing a good team and yeah. trying to help you. Well, it's obviously uh, no disrespect to where you came from, but you know, original six team, obviously. Yeah. Fan base is deep rooted. Yeah. Um, they're special. smart. They know their hockey. Yeah. Uh, one thing I can tell you is um, they expect you to work hard every game. That's that's the expectations that yeah. we have. Our fan base has. You may not play well every game, but you can work hard every yeah. game, right? Well, that's so, what do you need to do? Yeah. 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 Well, we're excited to have you. I think it's going yeah. to have a great year. It's, uh, we've got a few new faces, so you're not going to be the only one. No, I'm um, glad to be here. Yeah, good. The transition from Dallas to Boston and original six team will be tough, but the Bruins organization and the Boston fans will make it an easy one as long as his work ethic is there. I'm a two-way player type, and uh, I like to, to score goals too, and. Uh, uh, I like to be playing, playing a lot in both ends, and, and I, that's how I've been playing the last couple of years in Dallas. So uh, I'm really looking forward to come here and and uh, show the, the guys in the team and, and the, all, all the staff here that I can play play good hockey and, and help them. I'll let you do the rest of your thing, but uh, it's great to meet you. Yeah. And welcome. Thanks a lot. If you need anything, just let me know, all right? Yeah, I will. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Next up, it's time to check out the garden. Home of the black and gold. Nice. Black and yellow. That's it. Gold. Does the gold. white yeah, sit gold. together here? Size large, right? 
and spend a little time updating his wardrobe, because apparently when you play for the Bruins, you get a lot of free swag. It's just what, what's that These on? are nice. Yeah. Like, they're lightweight. And yeah. Yeah, yeah these, these ones will be fine. Do so you want two pair? Yeah, why not? So I sweat a lot when I practice. Do you? You want white or black? You do black if you want. Now that he's made the rounds at work, it's time to find a place to live. Louis and his wife Michaela are hoping to find just the right place for them and their two young daughters. How big was this one? 2,800 square feet allowed. Wow. It doesn't include the jacks. Wow. This is nice. Yeah, this is nice. Went looking for some places to, to live here and uh, look around a little bit in the city. It seems like a nice city, and uh, hopefully, we find some somewhere to live through here. You're going to have your heating garage right away, which is nice. Oh, okay. You just pull right in with the kids. You can, you know, got your stroller. You can just come out in here. And a lot of additional storage. In the back, yeah. yeah. Should we keep this one too? Is this there? Well, there we go. Huh? Is that the garden? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Finding the perfect place to live comes down to many things, but for some, like Louis, it's all about the view. We went to Charlestown, and uh, it was a nice place. And uh, we went near near in the North End, do looking looking for some places. And uh, everyone's been saying about the North End that it's like a little Italy. And uh, I've seen it today a little bit, and it seems like a, a really nice nice place to walk around, and uh, nice restaurants all over the place. So great to have you, man. Yeah, uh, excellent. We're, uh, you know, huge. Huge fans. Can see that on Yeah, man. We, 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 wear, we wear your colors every, every day, everywhere we go. It's been an eventful day for Louis, meeting his new boss, touring the new workplace, searching for a new place to live, and capped off by a great meal in the North End. I don't know about you, but I think he's going to like it. Five hundred miles west of Boston, a familiar face is enjoying his off season. So it's actually uh, been a record this summer. There's been uh, 34 or 35 days of straight of, uh, of straight sun, sunny days, no rain in Vancouver, which is pretty awesome. Because <laughs> usually we get a lot of rain here in Vancouver. By Beverly, drop back off. He's a shot. He's gone. the jackhammer going. Works to Lucic. Lucic is drive. Scores! They're just pounding away. It's rock and sock and roll. Bruins fans love Milan Lucic for his rugged physical play, but home in Vancouver, he has taken on a new role, dad. Milan and his wife Brittany welcomed baby Valentina to the world on January 17th, 2013. So now that we're parents, our summers revolve around trying to stimulate the baby as much as we can to tire her out so she can sleep. Obviously throughout the hockey season, it's you know, you don't get as much time as you do throughout the off season to spend time with your with your children. So uh, we're trying to make the most of it with me and her. What did you do to get? <laughs> oh, that's okay. What? It's been a lot of fun. It's definitely been a lot of a lot of change. <laughs> it's definitely different than than being than being single or just even in a relationship with uh, with no kid. You know, there's definitely uh, more responsibility that comes co that comes with all of it, but there's no better feeling than, you know, seeing your kid smile and, and, and putting that smile on their face. You ready? Let's go. Actually, Andrew Ferenc told me, you know, once you have the baby, you'll realize how selfish of a person you actually were until you had the kid. And 
And honestly, you learn more about it. Well, I've learned about it the most this off season where everything was, you know, kind of revolved around me and, and my time and, and, you know, all the people that I had to kind of go around and see. But now, <laughs> it's basically come down to two things is, is, is my off season workout and her. Amidst the quality time with his family, Lucha also knows a new season is looming. And along with the big changes at home, there's also been some big changes at work. You know, it definitely, it's gonna be a transition with the four guys leaving, you know. Guys that I talk to a lot, that I, guys that I, you know, had good close relationships with and, and uh, you know, got three good years with Horty Seggs and, and, uh, and Pevs and, and and six good years with Ference and you know they, they brought a lot to our team and they, they definitely brought a lot to the year that we won the cup in 2011 and you know they're 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 good people and they're they're great hockey players and and you know I'm definitely going to miss them because I did have a relationship with all four of them but you know they've they've definitely moved on and, and we have to move on as well as a team. There's no doubt that Milan will miss his old mates, especially line mate Nathan Horton but he's looking forward to creating some new chemistry with a future Hall of Famer like Jerome McGinley. I couldn't think of a, a, a better guy to replace him than, than Jerome, who's, who's a proven guy. He's proved that he can score goals and, and, and put up points, and he's got that competitive edge to him, uh, edge to him and, and I'm just, just excited to, to see how things are gonna uh, go next year, and, and, and I know uh, if if we, keep, if, if we play with that competitive edge and, and find that chemistry, we can be a dangerous line. Not too far east of Lucic's home in Vancouver, his new potential line mate is working hard to prepare for his 18th NHL season. But Jerome McGinley may have some work to do to win over Bruins fans. After a late season trade saw him head to Pittsburgh when many thought he was en route to Boston. We were informed around noon yesterday that, that we had the player. We, we, we won the sweepstakes, so, so to speak. We believed we had a deal. So later that night, around quarter to 12, uh, I got a call from Jay saying that, uh, that you know, it was a player's choice, and he uh, he opted to go to Pittsburgh, so we were out. It wasn't a personal thing. I mean, Pittsburgh had won like 15 games in a row on a winning streak, and they had guys out of the lineup. They just made some trades, and um, you know, in Boston at the time was was um, I think they were going through a bit of a losing streak. So, I mean, obviously it's a, it's timing, and I you know it's all that stuff, but. Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, I didn't mean it as a, a slight or anything like that. And it wasn't personal or anything. It was trying to, to, you know, if you had a choice at the time to run hot, I guess you try to do it. Well, we all know what happened to the Penguins when they came to Boston for the Eastern Conference Finals last season. Yeah, no, I can understand why fans were, you know, some were, um, Irritated or, or, or ticked off or whatever, and um, but uh, no, I you know I want to come in and, and you know put, play hard with the guys. So I look forward to, to being a part of that. And yeah, I guess you have to as far as winning over, just try to play play hard on the ice and, and be a part of winning games. With nine years as a captain in Calgary, Jerome knows just how important leadership is in the locker room. He also knows the Bruins have that part of the game well covered. They have great leadership. They have a whole core that have been together for such a long time and have had such success together. Uh, I just want to come in and just be myself. You know, I don't think I'm extremely vocal or, or, or extremely quiet. You know, just kind of play the way they play and, and you know, we're physical and, and aggressive and, and uh, you know, bring some, bring some skill to go with that and, and, uh, and have fun. They look like they have a lot of fun and winning's fun and that's why we play. Jerome had some great years with the Flames, but it's been a while since they had a serious shot at the Cup. He knows things will be different in Boston. You know, the Bruins are a contender. Over my career, I have had a very few years where, and I've, you know, it's been fun and no complaints, but we actually start a year where 
you're on a, a contender I haven't been part of. So I'm looking forward to a different change there. And where are you going? Where are you going? At his home in British Columbia, Jerome Aginla could easily look back at his 18 years in Calgary, his two Olympic gold medals, his young family, and call it a career. But no, he and his family are coming to Boston, and it's all good. We have uh, three kids there. They'll be nine, seven, and five, a girl and two boys. And they're excited about it. My wife's excited just to be a new experience, a new adventure, and just looking forward to coming and, and, and playing hard. And, and uh, I love the Bruins style of hockey, and I, you know, they're fans, they're into it. They're, they like the physical, you know, the combination between skill and, and uh, the, the passion and the, the, the tough style that the Bruins play. So I look forward to, to I love that, you know, watching it. I, li I like to try to play that way. So I want to come in and, and uh, be a part of that. While many New Englanders are enjoying their hard-earned vacations, they're on the ice at the Bruins practice facility in Wilmington, Mass. It's the team's annual development camp, a time for Bruins management to take stock of the next generation to where the spoke be. So I'm going to say a couple words, guys. My name is Peter Shirelli. I'm the general manager. Um, say a couple words about this camp. We've just come off a, a long, short season. Uh, we were a couple games away from winning the Stanley Cup. Um, two years before that, we won the Stanley Cup, and we've, we've had a lot of success. And part of that success is due to development, and that's this is where development starts. Um, this camp is not about how you play, it's just how you interact and how you learn how we do our business and how we interact with you guys. So development camp is not your regular training camp. Oh. I just set myself up for a spear. <laughs> they might not be able to bowl, but the Bruins know these kids can play hockey. So a big part of this camp is getting to know everyone a little bit better. You gotta have fun eating, because if you don't, you're gonna die. So there's some hockey, but it's about learning how to be a professional on and off the ice. There's service work, classes on eating properly and nutrition, team building activities, even a ropes course out on Boston Harbor's Thompson Island. You're done? Good. Pull up on the metal bar. I'm good. Come on, good. Why? Come on, stop. Wait, come on. <laughs> There's a definite summer camp quality to some of these activities, but make no mistake, this camp is definitely all about what it takes to become and what it means to be a Boston Bruin. You're the future of the team. You're the future of the Boston Bruins, all right? I don't want you to leave here and say, I don't understand what's expected of me. I don't understand what I should do. All those questions should be answered, right? now. So along with the fun stuff, the prospects also spend some quality time with the force of nature that is Bruins strength and conditioning coach, John Whitesides. 13, 14. Casto, touch the line, you're going to fail the test. Equipment guy does some, something for you, say thank you. All right, they're not your maids. Nice job picking up the water balls, smart, because I'm dying to punish you guys. Dying. Well, first you got to pay attention, obviously. It's not too hard when um, he's giving his presentation. He's kind of a hands-on kind of guy. You missed every line last time. Touch the lines. He's one of the most in most intense guys I've been around. But uh, he's awesome. I think that you know it doesn't really matter if it's six in the morning or ten at night. He's always he's always high tempo. He's always ready to go. So whether you're a first-round draft pick or seventh-round draft pick. The only difference between a first rounder and a seventh rounder, the first rounder knew where he was going sooner. Right? Makes no difference. All that matters is what you're willing to do out there, right? And what you're willing to do off the ice. You guys are all in the same situation. And if you weren't drafted, that doesn't make a difference either, right? Look at Tory Krug. Steps in place for us in the playoffs. All the way to the finals. Undrafted. It's who wants to work, who wants to put their balls on the line, who wants to be coachable, who listens to directions, all right, and who wants to compete. 
Any questions? And whatever you do, do not be late, even if you're a first round draft pick. Zubin, pick up the straps again, and go get your sneakers and come back in here. We got some up downs for you being late. Don't be late. Is that? So you can start counting, start again, we'll start at one, we'll go to 20. Then we'll start counting, we'll let it know the number. Right now, everybody thinks you can play. But how you handle yourself for the next one, two, three, four, five, six years, it can change on you. If you're a guy that doesn't want to do the work off the ice, if you're a guy that wants to party and Brown, that's going to start adding up. It's almost like building a file, right? Once that file gets thick and too thick with bad stuff, guess what? They're going to find somebody else that'll do it with a thinner folder, with less baggage. So that file's starting now. You know, how hard does this guy want to work? It starts right now. It starts with this camp. Look to your left, look to your right. There are guys you won't see again here. For every guy sitting here, how many of your buddies that you play hockey with want to sit here right now? Huh, Malcolm? How many on your team would kill to sit where you're sitting right now? A lot. The kids that aren't drafted by another team, you can bet every one of them want to sit right here. Right here. So you've got that part down. But now it's just getting started, right? That's just getting your foot wet. That's just getting your foot in the door. Now it's time to put in the work. Two guys the Bruins are watching closely in this camp are returning prospects Matt Grizzlick and Brian Furley. I think this year I definitely felt more prepared coming into it. Get in the pocket here. It's going to be a soft pocket. Don't get too high. Then you're going up to that side. Okay. I think going through this my second year now, you kind of learn what you have to improve uh, each camp. Like when it came in my first year, obviously, uh, you don't really know what to expect and you don't know a lot of people. So, um, you know, it's, it makes a huge difference to just to know, come in, know the organization a little bit, know some of the staffs and some of the players, uh, just to feel that sense of comfort. It, make, it really calms your nerves from day one to may help you uh, maybe perform a little better. I think that they really just want to uh, emphasize what it, what it means to be a pro. I think that, you know, from the nutrition classes to uh, you know all the all the on ice and off ice workouts. I think that you know um, they they really just want to show the difference between you know being a good hockey player and being a professional hockey player at the NHL level. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Reach out. Slow, slow. It's so hard to keep two hands on your stick on the first one there. And if you guys, when you got to stay in the middle. It feels so, it feels awkward. For every player, development camp ends with an exit interview by Bruins management. For a select few, it's where they find out if they have a shot at making the team's full NHL roster. For others, it's back to their college teams. Because I saw improvement from last year's camp to this year's camp on your, in your skating. You're, you were so much confident, more confident this year with the puck. Yeah. Down low, you were like, you know, you're a man, you're you're a man a, among boys times. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So you're getting close now. Like you're you're going back to Cornell. Yep. Okay. Like have you thought about what you know, the future at all or like yeah, you, I mean, I've thought about it just you know, I wanna go back and have a good year and obviously I'm you know, planning on getting my degree but uh you know, see what happens. Because we're very happy with your you know, your progress, yeah. where you're at, keep working hard listen to what Whitey has to say, mm -hmm. you know, take all that in, you know, become a professional, even at school. From this week, I kind of realized you don't always have to engage the bigger guys. You just have to not stand back, but kind of rely on your sense and body positioning in order to, and your feet as well, in order to um, beat them in those areas. Uh, I'll be disappointed if you come back next year. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you flat out. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to take some, you know, a lot more attention to detail. You know, and I think you hit it on the head there. Like, offensively, we know what you're capable of. You know what you're capable of. Um, 
shoring it up defensively and continuing to work on that, that's going to be the key to your success because the other stuff you have. development camp wraps up, Bruins management will decide who, if anyone from this group, has a legitimate chance of challenging for a roster spot on the big club in September. One guy the Bruins have been watching is forward Matthew Lindblad. Part of this camp, as I said, is when you walk through the door, you feel very comfortable, you know the staff, you know the coaches, you know what you're going to do to go make a team. And you should feel good about that. You should feel very comfortable So where your skill sets are, where your you know, professionalism and what your preparedness is. And I think you should take the next little while to say, okay, I'm in a good place with it. And come and push. You, know, you left school for a reason, you left school to make teams. You talk about the progression of things. You feel comfortable now leading up to you know, what will be your first pro camp? You feel... Yeah, yeah I feel uh, I thought it was the end of the week went on, I felt more and more comfortable out there. Um, what I liked about camp too, I was going to add, is that it's tough and it exposes you know, your weaknesses and some of your flaws and kind of gives me an idea of what I want to work on the rest of the summer and, and what I need to uh, improve on coming into camp. Another young guy who will be getting a long look is 20-year-old winger Anthony Kamara. You're, you're, you're ready to be a pro on and off the ice. You know, some of your praise is a little bit um, be it on cameras or whatever the case is, because I believe that. When you come back, okay, the mindset, as I read your quote today, of coming to make your impression, make it, uh, the decision be very difficult. That's, that's, that's the total focus. You know, granted it's a different environment because you're not the, you know, the top dog in your, mm -hmm. your junior team anymore. You just kind of come like a sponge off the ice, you know, watching how Bergie and all everybody else prepares and does whatever. But when, it, when, the, when it's on the ice, Anthony shows up on the ice and, and does everything, you know, with a focus and intent. Yeah. And then just let it happen. All right? Mm -hmm. Because I think you're in a good position to push some guys. Worlds away from development camp lies TPC Boston, home to the Deutsche Bank Championship and one of the premier golf clubs in the U.S. Today it's hosting a couple of the Bruins' top guns. It's not that physical that, that you know you can't uh, can't have a good time and relax, uh, but it's also pretty competitive. So I think it's uh, it's a good time to go out there and hit some balls, have some fun, but also you know uh, work on your your focus you know, for upcoming hockey season. So I think it's uh, it's a great workout for the hockey players. Of course, if you're a hockey guy, the first thing you need to do when you get to the course is tape your stick. Pretty cool grip, huh? Beautiful day for golf. Go skate this morning. All right, let's try the worst club in the back. The driver. You know how it is. With the driver, I'm not even gonna say it. All right, one, one drag goes straight, one right, one left. Now I just try to figure out how I do that, huh? What's up, Tuks? Now that Kretsch and Tuka are warmed up, it's time to hit the links. And Tuka has some help. Yeah, I got my brother Jonas here. He's a <laughs> licensed oh, caddy. Oh, he's just caddy. Okay. Yeah. He's just warming up for the Deutsche Bank Championship here. He's going to caddy for a professional like <laughs> Actually, Jonas is a winger in the Nashville Predators organization, but today, he's a caddy. Kind of. There's my caddy. Busy man, huh? <laughs> what do you need? Potter would be good. So how's this gonna play? How's the green? How's the green slope there on that bunker? I have no idea. My caddy here doesn't know shit, so I can't yeah, trust you more than that. me. <laughs> it's left, right. 
Not too much power. Should've, heard, should've listened to my caddy. Chance for birdie. Oh. Come on. Caddy was, I don't know, talking his phone again. It's a little bit on the left side. Like, left to right? Left to right, yeah. Exactly, sir. Almost straight. Go, go, go. Hey, that's not a bad read. No. First one. Almost perfect. Truth be told, Tuca is actually a pretty good golfer. Well, at least as good as the rest of us. Okay. That's, can't keep it all together, that's the only thing. Second shot sucks. Woo. Firm two. That's how they do it in the big leagues. Good job. You guys see my putting there in the last green? It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Thanks. See what we got here, though. Say 44, back nine, 93. Not too bad. Could be a lot worse. Happy with my day. Grab some lunch, early dinner, and maybe buy him a beer for caddying. <laughs> that's, that's it. More than 79 days have passed since we have last seen the Bruins take the ice at the TD Garden. And when they are seen together again in just a few short days, the team is going to look a little different. Many familiar faces will still be there, but others have moved on. A pair of rookies who made an impact late in the season will be asked to take on a bigger role. And a pair of the youngest prospects will be asked to make more than just an impression. But while the team will have a different look with different personnel, their goal, the organization's goal, remains the same.